And good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today. Brian Nato, Angela Herman here with you on a beautiful Saturday in Hollandale Beach overlooking the fast main track, the Tapita, and happy to report, although we are off the turf in race one, we are back on the turf on a good 11 race card. <laughs> yes, the rest of the way we will be on a good turf course. But do note that we're off for the first. We have a few scratches, but the rest of the card pretty much unperturbed by the scratch box. So a nice card, including, again, good turf races throughout the mix. Yeah, the feature uh, is a really good one. Sprinting on the turf and then the 11th race today to get out on the card is a tremendous optional claimer on the turf. That could be a feature on any other day. So really looking forward to that. The big news, of course, as well on the 11 race card. i got to do that quick race. Six kicks off the uh, rainbow. 325 in the gross jackpot guarantee so a lot to look forward to with that uh had a couple chances this week to sweep that but uh, we <laughs> forge on yeah we got very close yesterday mm -hmm. a couple of possibilities in the last race neither came through so we have 325 guaranteed gross in that pick six pool starts in the sixth race 11 on tap for you today though a lot to get through especially without all those yeah. scratches a little more to talk about yeah in race number one we kick off the early pick five again we're going to be off the turf in this race only we'll keep it at a mile and a 16th on the main track we're going to scratch the two four and the eight very few scratches major very few major scratches on the card today mm -hmm. kicks off off the early pick five we'll take a look at my ticket here a $30 play I didn't lose anybody in the opener I was always going five deep it's a spread kind of race we will get to it in a second in race number two top pick is dancing Ga doll excuse me off the claim for Gustavo Delgado three deep in race three with my long shot R La Dolce Vita for me on top in race number four, two deep. 51 is the order. Tapper light on the comeback. And then in race number five, the single is my best bet of the day as we get back onto the turf course. King Doro with a much, much better post than last time. $30 ticket. So let's get to the opener, Angela. Again, we are off the turf. We will go on to the Tapita here. Nothing changed for me. All five of the horses uh, I had, I'm using in the early pick five. It's a tricky kind of race. We both land on Alhan, who was going to be a price on the turf. The three scratches might knock that down a little bit. I don't know how much of a scratch or a price she was going to be anyway, but th that loud noise you hear will be if Bonnie Sandra wins the first and Brian has the pick five cornered except for her but I thought that you had a lot of the main contenders that would sit close to the pace especially Dandelion yeah. and with the scratches of seeking by seeking by the storm and Samurai's don't cry that only helps her cause I think to take this field all the way considering some of her pace competition we haven't seen recently isn't necessarily proven over the surface some knocks against them that you don't see with her so I would expect maybe her price to even come down right now you see two to one on a couple of other entities four to one on her but since she probably will be the pace setter, I would imagine she takes support as they get close to the gate. Yeah, we can bring up the replay. This is uh, the race two back when she was on turf. Now she's stretching out here. And I know it was on turf, but it's a lot of trouble going on here. You can see her down inside with the Didi McGee colors here, kind of just checking out of a bad spot. She doesn't like being down in there. You can see her very, very rank, wants to get aggressive, and she's going to have to back all the way out of it. And when you are sprinting five furlongs, on the turf, that's, that's just not going to work. And to her credit, she was still fifth this day, only beaten uh, less than six lengths. I would think he's still tugging here, entering the far turn. She's got some run, too, and, you know, you expand a lot of energy when you're, when you're kind of pulling that type of trip. So I think today she can stretch her legs a little bit, and uh, maybe that's going to help her. Hope over fear down inside for you. Okay, moving on, I guess. Hope over fear hasn't raced since August, but... Foster Gutierrez is good taking maidens, switching them over and getting them into places where they belong. He's three for his last nine in taking over maiden sorts like this. And this filly has run against turf horses going short and going long. She's got close, but not close enough, I think, to justify staying at a relative level down here. So they're going to shake things up with her, put her down for a $25,000 tag. And if she can run at all or handle this course at all, she should show it, especially against a shorter group like this now with the scratches. But hope over fear just been off a bit too long for me to put her on top. She made a lot of sense with a lot of other points like the things I just said but I still stuck with Alan on the outside simply because of recency but these two bring a lot of the same elements to the table for me yeah it's a tricky opener no doubt now that we're on the tapita I think it maybe opens up that much more and like we kind of hinted at it looks like a spread race early pick four in race number two and we're sprinting five on the tapita here these are Philly three-year-old Phillies Phillies mares four and up which have never won uh three races they are all older Phillies and mares though so you can kind of whack that three-year-olds out we'll kick off the early pick four here. 
and we scratched the one you like apples that made a difference to me in the pick four she was a part of my ticket that you can see up on the screen it's just cut down to nine dollars though i went with ala turka and dancing doll in opposite order select wise but still i think that they'll get similar trips in the second we'll talk about that more in just a moment i singled sponger she's my best bet of the day i thought that sponger could be close to the pace dictating things throughout and maybe finish the job that she started last time when she ran an excellent second moving on to race number four got a bit more coverage here with the scratch of the sixth in for a season she was one of my stronger opinions of the day she was a horse that i was going to hone in on in some other horizontal plays but that all goes kaput with her scratch so we go two four and five three six and nine for me in the last we're going to try to beat nate the great with a couple of different angles including your best bet king to oro i just thought that there was some other quality in there besides him so i couldn't narrow it down to just the three nine dollar ticket there and we'll get to race two here now and uh i know we had some interest in dancing doll off the claim and uh for gustavo delgado who's got big numbers yeah he is excellent excellent and especially the 21 to 46 day range which dancing doll is close to you see a lot of wins once they've got some time to work with these horses kind of get to know them a bit better he claimed her in the end of february so he has had that time to figure out where she belongs or what they need to do with her whatever tweaks they would need to make with dancing doll and she already fit well enough against these sort of horses where i think with maybe a freshener to her this daughter of Artie Schiller makes a lot of sense. And I mean, you don't win 12 races by not being good at your job. So Dancing Doll, if she is prepared, and it looks like she is, they're bumping her up a little bit in price. I think that she'll stand as a very tough, short-priced horse to beat. Yeah, Lily Bear is a 7-5 to five on the morning line. She's going to be a... She's going to be a short price, too, because the drop here is significant. You look at her figures, but I don't know. We both kind of didn't really trust her. Oh, I thought there was enough speed to maybe put Lily Bear out of where she wants to be. And it mm -hmm. seems that at this point of her career, Lily Bear is a horse who likes to be close to the front and really likes to just be at the controls from the start. I don't think that she's going to get that with six feet apart and summer home immediately to her left. Uh, who knows what summer home is going to bring to the table as far as speed on this surface, but she had plenty of speed in Indiana. And if those two go out there and run their typical races, Lily Bear might not be able to run hers. That's why I stick with the in two, inside two. Yeah, Ala Turka, we'll talk about her because we haven't seen her in a bit, but she had a, she's got a good uh, tapete, to two for three on the surface. Yeah, she hasn't run since January, but I mean, this is a barn that doesn't run a whole bunch of horses, but they're 10 for 59 lifetime, mm -hmm. at least in the last five years. Sorry, not lifetime, last five years. But he did train a horse off a 262 layoff day layoff to win. And Ala Turka, before she hit the bench, was running races that would win this sort of thing. She was doing it against, yes, age-restricted competition, but still in this relative price range. And you don't know if horses are going to be good at doing this on Tapita. You know that she is, and the price is going to be right. So yeah. if you like the three, you got to give the two a little bit of a look. If you think she needs the race, I get it. But I think the five furlongs off the bench isn't too much to ask. So I like them both. Yeah, if you can get by the three, in the seven this race really blows up the uh horizontals in there in race number three we got a good one here your best bet my long shot going at it <laughs> five and a half on the tapita 12 five maiden claimers here phillies and mares three-year-olds and up take it away with sponger you know, it makes for good tv yeah. right yeah, no, Sponger won the battle but lost the war mm -hmm. last time. She ran an excellent race on April 8th. That day she dueled on the front end. Velocissima, a horse that I have interest in later on the card, came and swept by her and a horse that she had been fighting with most of the way, but Sponger still gamely kept herself in front, and that was her best race in quite a while. It seems that she's one that wants to be close to the pace. She, a couple of three-year-olds who were inside do have speed, but I think being in that catbird seat, as you might say, towards their outside will be beneficial to her, and if she just duplicates some semblance of that race. I think she can get the extra half for a long and do it on the front end. Hopefully break her maiden today in start number seven. Yeah, it's a good post for her. No doubt she can kind of be to the outside. I, I like took a shot here. The four are La Dolce Vita who got uh, back sprinting last time for Antonio Sano and, and woke up and uh, he's been winning races this week. Yes, he has and been doing for you. so. <laughs> for many people, okay. most notably himself. But yes, I have been on, on board the Sano train, luckily, when they've hit the winner's circle at a price. But our La Dolce Vita, I thought, was another one who liked to be close to the front, but didn't necessarily have the sticking power of some of the other ones in here. Of course, she is one of the four-year-olds. I have to give her credit for that and the fact that she does show a bit of speed. But when we saw her at five furlongs last time around, she was behind Sponger. She didn't make much of a dent mm -hmm. on her. And I don't know in the, the course of a few weeks how much she's improved to 
turn the tables on Sponger. Yeah, it, it definitely fair. It, it, she's, a, she's a stretch, no doubt, but the barn is going good. Let's take a look at the stat on George Weaver, who's got the three and always connected at 7-5 to five on the morning line as a big player in here. It's not a huge stat, but it's, you know, it's it's there for you. One for ten on the all-weather sprints. Well, the more reasons to go against a 7-5 exactly. to five favorite, the better. So that's just another one. And always connected, although she does bring some good races to the table, that would probably win this. She also has had her chances to go by, hasn't necessarily closed the deal, and hasn't finished off in a way where you would single her in a group like this, I don't think. You could very much use her, and I took her second, but I don't think I would trust her as a lone play on top. If she no. wins, she wins, but I'm not going to trust her. I agree totally, especially at a short, underlaid price as well. We'll go to the fourth here on the uh, main track, seven furlongs, a good state bread allowance. We're going to scratch the six, sin for a season. Marks the return of Tap Her Light, who I've got on top, but you're towards the inside with Sistrin. I scratched into Sistrin. Okay. I loved the outside horse Sin for a season, but since she is not going to be joining us today, yes, I do go into Sistrin. And uh, her breeder, Arendelle, has had a mm -hmm. heck of a Thursday, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Had uh, bred a few of them, one with a couple of them that they still have. This daughter, Brethren, is no longer theirs, but Sistrin has done well at six furlongs and make giving you the impression that seven won't be a problem now she does come from off the pace i don't know what we're going to see as far as the pace with guardian angel without sin for a season in there and with tapper light coming back off yep. the bench she might be kind of fresh that all could benefit this filly i don't think that you're going to get much of a price on her but she does fit the bill for a horse that you think will like seven furlongs even though she hasn't done it since last december giving her another try at it now i think is well warranted by her recent form yeah and claudio gonzalez looks like he's going to start ticking upwards we know he's a barn that's going to win a lot of races here over the summer. Tapper Light comes back. She hasn't been out since August. The stakes placing at Ellis. I'll be interested to, to hear your thoughts on her when you see her in the paddock. It's been a long time for her. She is one that you're going to need to keep an eye yeah. on because she so, showed so much procrastity at two, and then they cut the cord halfway through. Whatever happened, obviously she's feeling pretty good about herself or she wouldn't be in an allowance, and she wouldn't be going seven furlongs. That's a lot yeah. to ask off the bench. But if she's showing them enough in the morning where they're going to put her in this spot in the afternoon – can't really doubt it, can't really toss her out, but I just thought that she was up against enough where I would use her underneath and wait for some day down the road to key in on her on top. Kiki Love is favored, and I get it, but uh, she doesn't have to win. <laughs> She's gotten a lot better the last yeah. time that Tapper Light and her faced off. There's quite a distance in between them. But like we just said, we haven't seen Tapper Light for quite a while. You've seen Kiki Love and the steps that she's taken forward and how much she likes seven furlongs. You don't see a whole bunch of three-year-olds with established seven furlong form, but I suppose she fits that bill with two out of her last three wins coming against similar sorts and coming at seven furlongs. So no holes in her. Kiki Love is just going to be a big underlay. I, I would yeah. guess in the neighborhood of what, even money, six to five? It's three-time winner. They're going to bet the one. She's loose. I'm surprised you didn't give her a little more of a look because Ouch. she's controlling in here, right? I thought that she got a fair shot at it last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much slower they're going to go today, and we haven't seen her since February 22nd. Yeah. All of that's fair, but I didn't like the rail draw for her either. It, it was an evenly matched race to begin with, so I just took a stand, and that stand got scratched. So what do you do? <laughs> well, we get onto the turf in race five. I know that, and that's exciting back on the turf here a good turf course it's a good race too made in special weight here we're going to scratch out the eight oh gangster and we both land on the three king doro my best bet of the day um the post is a big deal i think today the post switch for yeah. sure i know got a very wide journey last time around you make an excellent case for king doro you don't you don't need that much to make a good no. case for him, really. I mean, he stayed on well after a wide trip. Recently worked with Julia Shining. King Oro has been getting back, back in the set for the races off just a brief freshening that uh, he doesn't really need much improvement to beat this group. And King Oro has done it at points in the past. You know, he's seen some similar sorts of horses in here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that if he brings somewhat of that race, especially two back to the table, King Oro is going to be really, really tough. Yeah. First time gelding as well. Justin's legacy going to be ridden by Jeremy Laprida coming down from parks. Uh, we both got a little interest in him. Oh, yeah, he was he was the high horse, wasn't yep. he? First time around, I think something like 10, 15 to 1 morning line, and they bet him down to under 5 yeah. to 1. Right. Justin's legacy followed through with a good performance, even though it wasn't a winning performance. Went over to the Tapita, if he doesn't like that. Well, that's fine. Justin's legacy gets back to the turf. Looks like he's been working well to get back to square one, which was a good square one for him. And if Justin's legacy, it, I, I guess, is ready to go and can 
maybe show a little bit more mental maturity. He could bring a challenge to King to Oral, but there's still a lot separating them, even as far as experience at this point. Yeah, I jumped the gun. Guys, can we bring up the replay on uh, King to Oral? This is the race two back where we, we kind of alluded to. He just never really got tucked in. Uh, this is the good effort, though. He's going to end up making first run down on the inside. He's going to get completely shut off, and you're going to see him once we come out of this because you saw where he was going into that. Good job, Bob. Thank you. And now you're going to see him run up inside. He's going to get completely stopped right here when he was trying to make his move, and it's going to cost him several lengths. And first, Santorini, his stable make, is going to get the clear run on the outside. And to, to his credit, uh, King Doro did re-rally, and he finished second, two lengths behind his mate. And then last time, as we said, was the wide draw. Before we get to the break, let's talk about Nate the Great. He's a player in here, but eh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He's a tapita, you know, he's, he's the big figures around tapita. I'm not as about him <laughs> as you are, but Nate the Great was a horse I loved first time around when he mm. was against Royal Mendy, but he got up close to Royal Mendy and then he just kind of didn't know what to do. And you expect that out of a first time starter, you know, they don't necessarily know to run past horses at that point, but then they got him to the lead on February 16th and same sort of scenario yeah. he's just been getting close with good opportunities and last time around i didn't see quite as much as i did in those first two so if he wakes up on the switch back over to turf one of these days the light bulb is going to go on yeah. but you can't ask nate the great and be like you got it now like you just you can't ask him himself he's got to go prove that on the track and when he does he might beat me but he'll do so at a short price and if today is that day that's fine but i'm going to pick against him yeah i agree with everything uh you said there he's starting to get that reputation of maybe we're not too interested I said to get in the picture taken. Yeah. So I don't think it's, uh, but I think that it's in that neighborhood, maybe. <laughs> Five down, six to go. So we'll take a break. And when we come back, 325 in the rainbow. Stay tuned. Welcome back to race six here on Gulfstream today. Brian and Angela with you five down. So that means it's rainbow six time on the 11 race Saturday card. And as we said, $325,000 in that gross jackpot guarantee. And it's going to be big pools today with, uh, you know, center stage here. And we'll take a look at my ticket. It is a $57 and 60 cent ticket. It's an odd one for sure. Couldn't come <laughs> up with the single. It was earlier on in the card. We'll get to the six in a second. Number seven, I'll smile again in race number seven. In race number eight, we've got the nine, Chess Master, and that's the feature today and a really, really good one. Sprinting on the turf, the Sunny Isles. The spread is in race nine. I am on number nine, Corduroy Road, two deep in the 10th with number five, Reddington, second off the layoff, and then three deep in a really, Really good turf finale that could go easily go as the feature win for the money. I'm going to try to wire that field in his turf debut. 57 60 for me, and we're sprinting on the turf in race number six. Five for sprinting on the tapita, I should say. Five furlongs here, three year old fillies are four and up, which have never won two. The tag 35, and we're all over the place a little bit on our top pick, which is good. I see that. Vela. Chisima. This is great. Quote here. our buddy you upstairs. The five. Yeah. We'll go with the five. With for the you. replay. We can talk about the replay as you talk Velo about her. Chisima, yes, is my long shot of the day. And she comes out of the race that she won. She, uh, We're going to watch her in here come from way off the pace. But I mentioned a Philly Sponger that I like earlier. And Sponger is leading the way on the inside, as you can see. 
can't really see Vel Velochissima in the picture yet. She is going to fly up after these two du duel along on the front end. They did set the table for her. As you can see, the fractions up in the corner, 21 and 4. I mean, they did all the dirty work up here. Velochissima still makes an excellent run, and she manages to go through between horses. That's her, the three in the white blinkers. And instead of going outside, which would be the tempting move to do, Velochissima instead goes to the inside, is able to weave through horses, gets up, does not look like she's going to get there at any point in the stretch until right about now when you can see those fractions take the toll on Sponger and Tovia and Velochissima sweeps by very professionally. Now, this was her maiden win. It did take her a while to get there, but if we're mentioning light bulbs and horses that are going to catch on to it, maybe Velochissima caught on at the right time and we can catch her for win number two right on the back of that one at another price. Yeah, I I'm using her. I mean, you do not win Tapita Sprints like the way she did it. And to her credit, no one else closed. They all had a chance to do it. And right. the Sponger and the other pace horse, uh, they ran second and third. So I think that was a, maybe even a little bit better effort than it looked. And as you can see, when she leveled off late, uh, she, she won pretty easily. Temerity on top for me. She seems to be going the right way, but uh, her chance chances are adding up too. They are, but uh, Temerity is a horse that I used underneath just because she usually gives herself a bit to mm -hmm. do. And yeah. I didn't like the white, the wide draw in tandem with that. It's not a terrible spot for her. I think that Temerity makes enough sense where you could probably include her on stuff. Couldn't completely toss her from the mix. I used her fourth, but I saw it as more wide open than that. And sometimes these five furlong races are so chaotic. Looking at Temerity and just saying, good enough. I had to dig a little bit deeper, so I used her fourth. Love my job. Back on the tapita for Happy Alter is a player as well. Don't sleep on her. Late pick five time here in race number seven. And Angela's got a ticket on what could be a... A little bit of a tricky sequence, I think. <laughs> well, it could be a, a tricky sequence. I had to revise it a touch. Three, four, and seven for me in this first leg. Those are my top three picks. And I am I wish that I could get around Gustavor, but I can't. I'll Smile Again is my top pick in there. I did single the nine in race number eight. I know, I know. It's kind of the battle of uh, hometown teams for us. Chessmaster is one I'm familiar with. So instead of doubling the ticket for horses yeah. in the same price neighborhood, I just singled him. I used seven, eight, and nine in race number nine. That one I had to change around a few times. Teals the Soul is another one I tried to get around, but he is just too solid at this level. Two and four for me in race number 10. We tried to cut it down a touch there. He's in charge and big and classy. Big and classy is my top pick there. And in the last one, four, five, and eight, my top four picks spread out just a touch. I thought there was a crucial scratch in there of a rose for Raven that changed things around significantly from a pace standpoint. 36 for that late pick five. So we'll kick it off here in the Tapita. We're routing $35,000 maiden claimers a mile 70. I'll smile again. Both of us uh, on top on a drop well and do you think that this horse sits closer to the pace i was hoping that maybe this horse could sit just a touch closer no. ransour might be one of the only true pace types and i'll smile again drew favorably to go and drop in and maybe make things uncomfortable for horses who could get a little rambunctious behind him if the pace is slow yeah not only is there not a lot of speed in here there's some horses in here that we probably could run with early on <laughs> there's there, they have no speed whatsoever so i think you better be close in race number seven and Fair i'll enough. smile again should do it race eight is the stakes here and it's a good one the sunny isles it kicks off the late pick four we'll skip my ticket it mirrors my rainbow i'll have it out on twitter and we'll get to it in a little bit later it's an exciting race the, yes i am free the multiple graded stakes winner for trainer laura cesaris but we both went outside let's show the replay of chess master because this is the old they're off you lose <laughs> yeah i know i know he's the one i yes chess master drew the rail which was not fortuitous to begin with but there you go once chess master broke like that his day was essentially done and chess master even though he doesn't need the lead needs to be closer right. than that you can't give up that much ground in any sort of five for a long race he did so we're going to give him another try off the claim mike maker yeah. took him over throw that one out he drew to the outside of Yes, I Am Free. They're both very talented five for long turf sprinters. They're specialists at this. Hopefully they put on a good show. I just think that maybe Chess Master gets the slight edge for me. And admittedly, I, I'm more familiar with him. That's just a horse that I like and that I followed and that's made me money. And Chess Master is a horse that I think is in a great spot. The post position is significant here because, yes, I'm free is as fast as any horse we have here at Gulfstream Park. And the fact that Chess Master can track him early to his outside is a big deal. Correct. Yes. And if he's not good enough, he's not good right. enough. But he has run races that are good enough. 
And I think that no matter what the outcome, I don't think we'll get a great price from either one of no. these two. But we will see a good show of talent on display. Yeah, yes, I am free. It's, it, Laura Cesaris has done such a good job with him. He's He loves his turf course. Eight for 16 lifetime. And you know we're going to know where to find him. Um, we tried to split him. Uh, we've got him, excuse me, but we did come up with Super Success, who has never tried uh, turf here at Gulfstream Park. But he could trip out a little bit. He <laughs> could trip out. You know, he was claimed a few back, a pretty savvy claim. And I don't think that they had this in mind necessarily, but he's run well right. enough for them where they see fit to take a shot. If the horse is going to be any good on turf, do him when he's at his best. He drew well as well. And he's only had three starts, or some of these have had longer campaigns. He took off from November to January, got a little bit of a freshener. So you'd have to think that there's some things in his favor, and you'll get a much better price on him than you probably will any time in the future if he runs well. Late pick three time in race number nine. We sprint five and a half on the Tapita and four-year-olds and up in this $10,000 claimer. It's a tricky race. This was the race I spread a little bit in uh, my rainbow in late pick four. Number seven, heals the soul on the claim for you. Wow, is he good when mm -hmm. he's at 10,000, especially when he's on this surface. My goodness. I mean, look look up, back up and down. Take out those state bred $20,000 optional claimers. He's won his last four against this sort of thing. He's been claimed a lot, too. Heels the Soul just has found what he's very good at. Drew advantageously. Morelos will be aboard today, but he doesn't seem to be dependent on one pilot or another. This is just a horse that gets what he's doing right now and is doing it very well. I... I changed it up. There's a lot of ink on here, a lot of changing of picks, and it all came back to Heels the Soul. So I went 7, 9, and 8. I really tried to infuse a price in there, but these two are just too solid right now, he and Corduroy Road, to think that they're going to regress enough for somebody to really upset them. Yeah, and Corduroy Road, as you kind of hinted at, has been such in good form. He drops a little bit, and he's had trips of late, too. And they're very good switching over to Vasquez with the barn. Carlos yep. David is going to switch over to him. 20 for 94 overall, but 10 for 39 in these synthetic races a lot of them were longer they're really good when they hook up switching over and getting him in the saddle on a route and synthetic but i'm gonna still give him a try and use him in the mix with this because he's another one that's just very much become a specialist at this sort of thing yeah no doubt race number 10 kicks off the late double here back on a fast main track and this optional claimer for the state breads it's a good one too and you land with big and classy he's got to prove it on the main track he does he does, but he has a uh, good enough experience over it in the past. The second place finish yeah. in recent times where Big and Classy, I think, is a better horse now than he was then. And Big and Classy is a proven commodity going seven furlongs. And he's one of those bigger horses that seems to take a little while to get into stride, really get his momentum rolling. And seven furlongs sometimes fits those horses very well. Yes, he did that on Tapita, but I'm not worried about the, the move over to dirt. Bobby DeBona has obviously figured out what works well for him. He's good moving horses over from synthetic to dirt. Five for his last 13, one for one if they won their last time around. Kind of like when we talked about recently with, uh, I believe, Super Success, when a horse is in that kind of form, you're willing to try new things with them because you know that they're going good guns. Right. Reddington for me, second off the break. We'll show the stat on Kelsey Danner. Caught a good one last time in Universal Payday, and we'll take a look here. Not a huge sample, but three for 11, 27% route to sprint. I like that foundation of a mile. Yeah, and the scratch of Song Runner mm -hmm. should definitely help Reddington. I thought that he had a really good trip last time around. He can obviously build on that since that was his first race since October, but Reddington still hasn't won at seven furlongs. He got awfully close, so take nothing away from him in that, but I think that if... If he gets to that one pace that he sort of gets to, he might need a little bit more ground than seven furlongs. If he stays close enough, it won't mm -hmm. matter. But I thought maybe Redding to fall just a touch further behind than he would like to be. And they're going to have to catch the two. He's in charge. Right. Exactly. And I put them him in between those two right. for that reason. I think that he's in charge might take Reddington out of his game or at least put him a little bit further behind where he wants to be. I still think that big and class can come get them both. But if two are going to escape on the lead, it's obviously the two and the yeah. five, but they're going to take a lot of money in tow. Yeah, no doubt. And the fee the finale, like I said, it could be a feature on the turf here in this optional claimer. We're going a mile and a 16th. The whole uh, game, the 10 is out, excuse me, the <laughs> widest is out. You're down to the inside in Yamato off the claim. That was a big scratch. Mm -hmm. I had to try to change things around. There's, no speed in this race. Right. And a rose for Raven was probably going to be the one that go to go up and establish the tempo. Without him out, I had to move up your top pick, yeah. win for the money, and I'm very frightened of him. But Yamato represents a barn that's been red hot with their claims lately. Seven for their last 18 here at Gulfstream Park in the last six months. And 
I mean, he's won five of his last nine. It's just, it's amazing if Yamato can follow through with any of those. He's already got two recent wins. It wouldn't take much for Yamato to stay close, I think, and adapt to moving back over to the turf course and pick up his third win in a row. Now, granted, it will be Gulfstream turf rather than Tampa, but Yamato is in good enough form. I've been sticking with horses kind of on this trend, I guess, today. And I think that Yamato will be an underlay, but a very dangerous one. Yeah, Mike Maker's got a couple live ones off the claim. Angela mentioned win for the money. We'll show the last race because I do think he's loose and controlling in here. Hasn't tried turf before, but the comeback on Tapita was really, really good. He's the three out here dueling with Grand David, who's seven to two. Grand David is going to end up running seventh in this race. And win for the money is going to get necked out in second by Carruthers, who's dream tripping right here. And Carruthers absolutely loves the Tapita, and to be beaten just a neck by him off an April 2nd to March 15th layoff, I thought was a really, really strong effort. You know, maybe he regresses a little bit. Maybe he doesn't handle the turf a little bit. But especially with the scratch, as you mentioned, of the 10 arrows for Raven, he's got to be controlling in here. If Sonny Leone gets him out of the gate, he could crawl right along on the front end. I'm sure that won't happen. I'm sure somebody will see that and make sure that this horse is honest up front. But Cassie put in two. Both of them stand excellent chances in here. But this one gets elevated a lot by that scratch. So I had to put him in front of Olympic runner. I'm hoping that Yamato shows some more pace. He is capable of mm -hmm. laying mid-pack. I guess I don't think that he's going to go up and push things along. But you never know. Paco Lopez hops aboard. Maybe he gets more speed out of this horse and puts him in a position he hasn't been in before. But the right place at the right time close to the front, he could turn he could turn a new leaf and uh, become a wire-to-wire -wire sort of horse. Not counting on it, but I'll still use both of them in my pick five. Well, that's it for the 11 races. Before we leave you, though, it's lightning round time. And to lead it off, uh, Lord Miles went up to Aqueduct and blew up the board in the grade two Wood Memorial. And he's going to try to do it again a week from today in the Kentucky Derby. He tightened up for that right here at Gulfstream Park. He is on the outside. This was his final work yesterday for shipping to Louisville. Looking good. Lord Miles on the outside. Kind of looked similar in the Wood Memorial, getting yeah. up at a huge, <laughs> huge number. He didn't think he was going to get there, got there. And, I mean, all systems go. He said yeah. he wasn't trying to really get to the bottom of this horse, just wanted to make sure he stretched his legs before he headed to Kentucky. I think that's exactly what you got. And Safi Joseph Jr. has been very candid. He knows he's got to improve, but a wide open derby this year, and we'll see what Lord Miles does next Saturday. Your best bet today. Uh, my best bet is Sponger. Goes right along uh, with the other one. Sponger is in race number three. That's the seven, hoping she can sit close to the pace and win, get win number one. King Doro for me on the turf in race number five, and uh, your long shot. Yeah, I follow her up with the horse that just beat her last time around, Velocissima, in race number six. That's the five, trying to stack them back to back. For me, it is uh, going against Angela's best bet, which uh, <laughs> I, probably, I probably should know good better. TV, right? But, uh, our La Dolce Vita in race number three at a big number, 15 to one. Uh, today, you can do, uh, it's a bonus uh, if you want to, you know, become a member of first bet and we're giving up to a hundred dollar bonus on the betting app what better time with uh, next saturday and certainly a great 11 race card today and then uh the last day with the tickets you can get preakness tickets we did it all every saturday in april today is your last day through xb rewards so uh you can win an infield fest ticket uh and i've done it many many times and uh <laughs> That is worth your price <laughs> of admission. Might uh, You might have a headache the following morning, but that's a heck of a good time. And, of course, the second jewel of the Triple Crown will be three weeks from tomorrow, and I uh, can't wait for that. But uh, that's it for us. We'll send it upstairs to Pete. 11 races today. Happy to have you aboard.